Yes, sir. You can. Yes, sir. You can continue, sir. Okay. Yeah. Inviting me uh, to. Speak few lines uh, about Indian economy and the uh, Bhrumuni not uh, twice or twice he communicated communicated with me regarding this issue and then uh, I'm very much happy to be a part uh, of this uh, joint meeting. Sir, can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you perfectly, sir. Yes. Uh, okay, but. Uh, uh, in this busy schedule, I'm also busy uh, in different uh, uh, duty uh, in my university. As well as just uh, before I start the meeting, I attended one faculty development program and uh, directly I tried to join. And I apologize due to technical issue because for a long time, I unable to attend any, any Zoom meeting. Uh, before that, during COVID period, uh, we uh, continued our classes by uh, Google Meet platform. Uh, and uh, I really, ap uh, really apologize uh, due to this inconvenience. It's uh, perfectly fine, about, sir. Yeah. And uh, while we talked about uh, the Indian economy, it's actually it is a broad topic. Uh, it's not possible to cover within uh, half an hour or uh, within how uh, one hour class. But Brigamoni uh, Nath, uh, he requests me to deliver some lecture, whatever uh, you prepare, your, uh, whatever topic you prepared, and then whatever topic you like, you just deliver one lecture. To the students, uh, they are going to they are going to join from across the country. So, I'm going to uh, actually I prepared mentally to present uh, some uh, some slides uh, how uh, the various uh, questions normally comes in the NET examination, state examination, as well as other competitive examination civil services and other competitive examination. Actually, I tried to, uh, I plan it out to present, but uh, due to technical issue, I could not do so. But I just uh, want to uh, present uh, some my idea how the economy, it was developed from marginalizing period up to Keynes, and then the, some questions uh, I'll place for introduction uh, to the participants uh, who have joined from different parts of our state as well as uh, our country. So the economy well organized uh, from the classical 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 school, but before that, uh, some economic idea, it was developed uh, during the time of mercantilism in the 15th centuries. And then the, in, the, in that mercantilism idea, actually, we mainly focus on trade and they try to accumulate more wealth by involving trade. And their main, economic idea to expand their colonies in different countries and after that accumulate wealth by involving trade. They manufacture the accumulate raw and wealth that they and that they earn that they gather from different colonies and after that they manufacture it and then they sell sell it to the colonies countries with higher prices. So we following that policy, they accumulated more wealth and then became, uh, that is their main intention to be raised. And that policy, it was not sustained for a long time. And after that new economy, that is physiocracy, it was developed in France. So physiocracy, that idea, 
they mainly concentrated on agriculture because agriculture they believe agriculture will, uh, agriculture can contribute or agriculture can generate net pro net product so net product will be not generated from other other sectors or other sources that they believe and that idea also also it was not sustained for a long time and then we economy it was well organized when uh, adam smith he wrote the wealth of nation the famous famous work that is wealth of nation when he composed that book then the economic idea it became systematic and well organized while we talked about the classical uh, classical school so that economic idea normally de um, developed in the 17th to 18th centuries the classical school actually name given by keynes and then it, it was the name invented by marx to cover the economics Ricardo, John Stuart Mill, and their predecessors. But Keynes included in this school mainly John Stuart Mill, Marshall Edwards, John Bentham, Malthus, Ricardo, JBC, and Adam Smith. Among all these economics, Adam Smith, Ricardo, and John Stuart Mill, known as classical trinity in economics, because the classical school mainly established based on their contribution. That's why so these three economics known as classical tr trinity. Many theories they developed uh, during that classical school. Adam Smith uh, developed a number of theories uh, in classical school, mainly the division of labor, theory of trade, theory of distribution, naturalism and naturalism and optimism, canon of taxation, number of theories he developed. Similarly, David Ricardo also contributed a lot uh, to the classical school. This period in classical school, they mainly focus on legislature, the minimum rule, of the government. And they believe the government is based with governed list. They believed market and econo market economy based on the free and perfect competition. Okay, sir, am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, I'm talking about the classical school. Okay, classical school, they believed the market economy, production, exchange, distribution, all the economic forces guided by the market forces that they believe. They believe the full employment, the economy, it will be self-adjusting, towards full employment, they believe. Their economy, it was as a whole in our economic language, we can call it supply side economics and uh, the beliefs, the CBC law of market that supply creates its own demand. They believed the individual is the best judge of the welfare. If all in individual they do the best, then that is the best contribution to the society, society so and to the economy. Their economy to it was based on the long run.
state economy, classical economy idea, it was also not sustained for a long time. After that, new classical economy idea was developed. New classical idea was partial equilibrium analysis. And uh, they concentrated a part of the economy. And that economic idea, it was developed up to the 19th centuries. And they dominate new classical economic idea, they dominate microeconomic. The main contributor of new classical economics was Zeban, his contribution on 1835 to 1882. Karl Menzer was the main contributor, one of the, uh, one of the uh, contributor of new classical school and uh, Walras. These three economics known as the founder of new classical school and their main contribution was theoretical explanation of consumer behavior. An other contributor of new classical school was Big State Marshall J.B. Clark Bombara. Big State Marshall and J.B. Clark, they developed the productivity theory of distribution, elasticity concept, and consumer surplus. Bombara developed the period of production during that period, uh, during that school. New classical economics concentrated partial equilibrium analysis and isolated with scientific conclusions. Their economic idea because isolated with the scientific conclusion or related with a part of the economy. Classical economics, economic idea concentrated on capital accumulation and profit and were faced problem with a long run growth. The new classical economic idea on the other hand, specially concentrated with short term problem of allocation of given resources with maximum benefit. They concentrated the marginal analysis, new classical economy idea concentrated on marginal analysis, which is based on the logic of decision-making conclusion and optimum use of resources. They believed the marginal satisfaction of last money spent on different commodities should be equal. Their main contribution concentrated finally the consumer equilibrium, how they consumer get in equilibrium, and at the same time, how producer get in equilibrium. A consumer get in equilibrium when the last money spent on different commodities should be equal and their satisfaction should be equal. Similarly, in the factor market, in the, in the product market, or in the factor market, sector price should be equal to their derived demand. The derived demand is also called how much satisfying power have in a particular or in uh, the sector uh, used by the producer. That contribution uh, was also not sustained for a long time. Economy after leasing the peak, again, there was a great depression uh, since uh, the students of economics they are very much aware that uh, economics development overtake number of fluctuations. The cyclical fluctuations and ups and downs, it is also called trade circle in economics. In 1930, the economy 
suffers a great depression. Uh, following the economic idea of classical and new classical school, there was a great depression. All the economic activity, it was sluggish down, profit, it was decreased, and the people hit hard for their survival. Economics search alternative way to recover this depression. How the economy will revive on the depth of depression. During that time, one economics and uh, at, during that time, the panic of the first world war also there. Due to that panic and uh, the economic cyclical fluctuation lead to a great depression in 1930. And during that time, Maynard Keynes developed one theory, which is that income and employment theory, so based on which the world economy was recovered. So I'm going to highlight the points of income and employment theory because in competitive examination, at least some question may arise from uh, this theory, especially this uh, ancient theory is related to the concept of multiplier, is related to the, the concept of aggregate demand, aggregate supply, savings and investment, and employment. Before going details of the theory, all the economic theory based on mainly two opposite forces. One is supply and another is demand. So if there is equality between demand and supply, in economic language, we call it equilibrium. The classical economy idea is a supply side economy. They neglect the demand side. But demand and supply equality is very, very essential to the equilibrium in an economy. Other economic idea concentrated or their economy idea in one side. Classical economy idea neglect demand side. Therefore, they face this problem in the long run. Ancient economy idea, it was demand side economic. His contribution based on aggregate demand. How an economy can increase the aggregate demand. So one, once aggregate demand increased by any activity, either fiscal or monetary policy, then the purchasing capacity of the people increased. With that purchasing capacity, people will spend their income in the market and the economy will flourish. That was the main concept of the income and employment theory of Keynes. It was a great contribution by Maynard Keynes 
So based on his con contribution or his contribution, to honor his contribution, surprisingly, his name in economics as a Keynesian economy. Much of his work took place at the time of Great Depression, and his best work, General Theory of Income, Employment, Money, which was published in 1936, he explained how the economy can revive from the depth of depression. Classical economy believed the price would adjust automatically to restore equilibrium at any level of an economy. Keynes agreed, yes, market would automatically lead to full employment equilibrium, but in fact, the economy could settle in equilibrium at any level of unemployment, but not employment. And uh, an economy, it will be equilibrium by equality between the aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So once we call it aggregate demand, then aggregate demand, he called it uh, consumption plus consumption expenditure plus investment expenditure. And uh, aggregate supply means the total supply of goods or total productive capacity of an economy. How much productive capacity will be utilized? It depends on aggregate demand. So that's why somehow aggregate demand should be improved, should be increased. In his explanation, aggregate supply, it is consumption and savings. So once there is equality between aggregate demand and aggregate supply, the economy, it will be getting equilibrium. That means C plus I should be equal to C plus S. So that is also important uh, in competitive examination. So what is the condition of uh, the equilibrium um, level of national income? So once aggregate demand is equal to the aggregate supply, then the economy is getting equilibrium. In relates to the aggregate demand and aggregate supply, one another one concept is related with, with that, that is effective demand. So the equilibrium, the intersection point of aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So that intersection point is called that effective demand. So it is a position of risk or that position indicates the entrepreneur, they neither have a tendency to increase the production nor a tendency to. It indicates the equilibrium level of income and employment corresponding to the point of effective demand. Actually, I tried to present some slides such that it will be easier to the uh, participants to understand. But uh, due to technical issue, I could not do so. So now, how investment, there is investment uh, lead to uh, income, further income generation. So he explained different phases. Once uh, people that don't have purchasing capacity during that uh, patient time, once investment increases, then immediately people purchasing capacity increases in T plus one period. And uh, Purchasing capacity increase means increase in demand, aggregate demand, and from the economy side, it's not possible to increase the supply. 
a desired demand immediately. So there will be interaction between aggregate demand and aggregate supply. And finally, additional or excess aggregate demand will pressurize to produce more. And finally, the economy it will be restored at higher level. So that is the main content of the income and employment theory of gains. So according to the effective demand, again, there will be equality between savings and investment in the economy. And uh, finally, that savings and investment determine the equilibrium level of employment in the economy at higher level. In competitive examination, uh, normally there are some equations from economic background, uh, from the economics background, some equations set from uh, this theory. The consumption function, I just uh, explained explain because PowerPoint presentation is not possible uh, now. So C is equal to A plus B, Y, so that is the consumption function. And uh, I is equal to investment is given and constant. So income, it will be determined according to the effective demand. So income, it will be C plus I. Sometimes investment is given and then uh, uh, investment is given, and sometimes we need uh, uh, students they need to find out uh, the consumption function. So once we place that equation, then it's possible to find out the consumption function or the equilibrium level of national income. The determination of national income is closely related with uh, marginal propensity to consume. So how much income it will be generated, it depends on marginal propensity to consume. Higher level of marginal propensity to consume lead to higher level of income generation. The formula of multiplier. So multiplier means the incremental sense of income to incremental sense of investment. As a result of investment, how much changes in income? That is called multiplier. And symbolically, del Y by del I. Sorry, am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. But we are... So multiplier, this concept, the originally actually it was developed by F. A. Khan in 1930. That question also important in examination. So his multiplier concept was uh, is known as employment multiplier. F. A. Khan. But Keynes used his concept and the develop. The, in, the concept of investment multiplier. That is important question. Normally, it states in various competitive examination that I saw in various competitive examination frequently that question comes. The formula of 
multiplier is equal to del y is equal to k del i. That means incremental change in income as a result of incremental change in investment. Sometime del y value it will be given. Students they need to find out the value of multiplier. Sometime multiplier and investment uh, income value it will be given. And uh, the students they need to find out the investment. So formula is equal to k is equal to del y by del i, where k represents the value of multiplier and del y, that is incremental change in income divided by incremental change in investment. So continue with the Keynesian theory of income and employment. So y is equal to c plus i consumption plus investment. So change in income del y. If there is change in income, so it will tend to change in consumption, change in investment. If there is change in investment, or we can understand like that, if there is change in investment. There will be change in consumption as well as change in income. So the equation it will be del y is equal to del y into c plus del y. If we simplify this equation, finally k is equal to that is multiplier value is equal to one divided by one minus c. So here C means the marginal propensity to consume. From Keynesian consumption analysis, marginal propensity to consume plus marginal propensity to save is equal to one. That's why the multiplier, the value of multiplier, we can find it out either by marginal propensity to consume or by marginal propensity to save. The formula is k is equal to one divided by one minus c. That is also important for competitive examination. Sometimes marginal propensity to value is given and students they need to find out the value of multiplier. And sometimes the value of multiplier is given and the students they need to find out the value of marginal propensity to consume. Marginal propensity to consume, it's nothing but how much consumption expenditure we made. That is called marginal propensity to consume from our income. Or out of 100 rupees, if we spend 70 rupees, then marginal propensity to consume will be 0.7. If we spend 0.8, then marginal propensity to consume it will be 0.8. So since MPC plus MPS is equal to one, multiplier can find out by value of MPS. Sometimes question comes to find out the value of multiplier and then they have given some uh, MPS value. So students, they need to remember the formula how we can find out the value of multiplier. So that is very common question in various competitive examination from this, uh, from this uh, part. 
Now, the size of the multiplier or how much income it will be generated, it depends on the value of multiplier. Higher the value, high value of MPC, it represents the higher the income generation. That's why size of the multiplier, it depends on the value of the multiplier. Actually, I want to present some slide. How there is the investment will generate more income in the economy based of multiplayer. It was actually a great theory based on the world economy it was developed. Previous economy idea, they neglect so without demand and supply equality, no economic policy, it will sustain. So always there will be equal, even today, various economy policy has introduced, it is introduced based on the demand and supply side. So that is the fundamental of economics. Now moves to the leakages, fundamentals of economics. Uh, leakages of multiplier, Hello, sir. Core, sir. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, we are talking about the concept of multiplayer. Okay, the formula of uh, the multiplier, actually I want to, oh, it's going... am I able, Digo Mani? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. I think I, I want to, uh, uh, again, whatever I explaining, I, I want to uh, revise it. The formula for multiplier is equal to k is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus c. Okay, so students, they need to remind the formula. So here, k represents the value of multiplier and the 1 divided by c, c the, the value of marginal propensity to consume. The students always, once they appear the examination, they need to remind that formula. So always one or two questions uh, from this chapter uh, Regularly, uh, uh, examiner they set the question. Since uh, the value uh, one is equal to MPS plus a, uh, APS, the uh, marginal propensity to consume plus marginal propensity to save, one is equal to MPS plus M MPC. So the value of multiplier we can find out either the value of MPC or the value of MPS. Sometimes 
the value of multiplier is given and the students they need to find out the value of marginal propensity to consume and sometimes the value of multiplier it will be given and students they need to find out the value of marginal propensity to save the simple formula the formula is a is equal to one divided by one minus c so the students they need to remind that formula remember that formula now the size of the multiplier the size of the multiplier is depends on the, the value of marginal propensity to consume the marginal propensity to consume that means how much expenditure we spend or how much expenditure from our side for consumption purpose in simple way we can explain it that out of 100 rupees how much we spend for our consumption purpose out of 100 rupees if we spend 70 rupees for consumption then that is marginal propensity uh, then marginal propensity to consumption uh, consume will be 0.7 the size of multiplier it depends on the size of the marginal prop marginal propensity to consume the higher the marginal propensity to consume leads to higher the value of multiplier and higher the level of income generation that's why ancient theory or his contribution closely related with the value of multiplier as well as value of marginal propensity to consume. Here, actually, I want to present some slides how uh, different levels of marginal propensity to consume uh, leads the further income generation. But due to technical issue, I couldn't do so. I'm extremely sorry for that. Uh, now some question comes from leakages of multiplier. I just I want to uh, explain from uh, explain few lines about uh, leakages of multiplier. Uh, if a country they have uh, debt duces or loan duces, then it reduces the size of the multiplier. Holding ideal case balances uh, reduce the value of size of the multiplier. Import duces reduce the size of the multiplier. Higher taxes or taxation reduce the size of the multiplier. Inflation or increase in price in the economy reduce the size of the multiplier. Sometime in competitive examination, so some option it will be given, then students need to find it out, which is the most appropriate region of, of leakages of multiplier. So need to remember the paying of debt holding ideal case balances, import, taxation, and increase in price. So these are called the leakages of multiplayer. And another concept is related with uh, income and employment theory as well as the concept of a multiplayer as a whole, that is backwards and the forward effect of multiplayer. So backwards effect, it is also it is also uh, closely related. So once there is decrease in investment, so there will be a multiplier decrease in income generation in the economy. That is called backwards effect, and the forward effect is that I have explained just now. So once there is increase in investment, so it leads to 
further income generation. So that is called forward operation of multiplayer. So we can explain that forward and backward by putting different numerical value. So once there is 100 crores of investment, uh, a decrease in investment, and if MPC is equal to 0.5, then harder it will reduce 200 crores of income generation. Sometimes question may come, then students, they need to put that formula, del y is equal to k del i, then if they put the figure, then they can find it at, find it out how much forward and uh, backward operation of multiplayer. So if MPC is equal to 0.5 and then there is 100 crores of in investment, if we put, then it will it will show there will be 10, 200 crores of uh, income generation. So that is forward operation. And if there is 100 crores of investment decreases, then if we put this figure in the formula, then it shows minus 200 for uh, minus 200 crores of uh, low income generation in the economy so that is backward operation sometimes such kind of question may become students they need to be careful Sir, big money. Yes, sir. Actually, I want to interact, but uh, my slides uh, is not possible to present here since I'm joining by mobile and then my uh, slides in the laptop. So I want to conclude actually here, and then if there is any query from the student side, and then I want to interact. Or I can present some questions uh, for interaction to the student. What shall I do? So, dear students, if you have any queries, then kindly text uh, in the text chat box, and Sir will try to give you the answers. So, dear students, if you have any questions or queries, kindly chat with uh, Dr. Corsar. Corsar, there is a question. Of course, sir. Are yes. you audible? Uh, yes, tell you me. just uh, see the chat box. So there is a question by Vinit that uh, what is the formula of multiplayer? So multiplayer, we can find it. Okay, thank you for the question. That's a very important question. Very important as a like, common question for competitive examination. So multiplayer con concept actually it's a, it's a wonderful and then wonderful contribution from uh, Maynard Keynes, the formula of multiplier is equal to k is equal to one divided by one minus MPC. So if MPC value is given, then we can find out the value of multiplier. If the value of multiplier is given, then we can find out the value of MPC. The, the formula is K is equal to one divided by one minus MPC. Since MPC plus MPS, marginal propensity to consume plus marginal propensity to save is equal to one. We can find out the value of multiplier either by MPC 
or by MPS, marginal propensity to save. So if MPS value is given, then the formula, it will be K is equal to one divided by MPS. So in that case, once we have the MPS value, then we can find out the value of multiplier. I think it's clear. Is it all right, uh, Binit? Okay, thank you. So I think, uh, is there any question from the students? Uh, uh, there is another question for Courser. Okay. Sir, you have told about equilibrium model, but uh, I have seen many questions regarding dynamic equilibrium model. Sir, can you please explain it? Dr. Courser? Dynamic, that uh, Keynesian, yes, dynamics equilibrium uh, that uh, you see uh, once there is uh, uh, this equilibrium between the demand and the supply. And then if there is external forces to restore the equilibrium, then the, in the T plus one, T plus two, T plus three, uh, there, are, there will be different period. And, uh, and then the, the external forces when it's pressurized to uh, reach that equilibrium and then different phases, uh, it's called the economic uh, Dynamics. So I'll uh, I explaining that uh, Keynesian theory of income and employment. So once there is government investment in a particular place, then the people purchasing capacity it will be increased. And with that people purchasing capacity, that means immediately people income it will be increased. And with that additional income, they want to buy commodity from the market. But from the producer side, it's not possible to supply or produce the commodity immediately. The additional demand that, or additional income that people they have, they have, they always try to buy the commodity from the market. So it will pressurize the producer to produce more. And that interaction from the phase one, Till up to the restore the equilibrium finally by equality between aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So this interaction, uh, you can see the dynamics. Phase T plus one, T plus two, T plus three period. And uh, finally, for example, in T plus four period, uh, the economy restored the equilibrium. So different phases from the period number one to period number three, so that is called uh, economic dynamics. I think I can answer your question. Of uh, course, sir, there is another question. Yes. Can we relate it with uh, circular flow of income model? Again, uh, Pratham has questioned you. Yeah, circular flow is a real jam is is possible. Uh, Pratham, are you satisfied? If you don't mind, then you just unmute uh, the microphone and uh, communicate with course directly. Any question for sir? Sir, can you please explain it further how it is uh, related to circular flow of income model? I have seen many questions regarding this topic previously. Uh, circular flow, that means you are talking about uh, uh, income accounting. 
sir this uh, dynamic equilibrium model uh, can we relate to its uh, related to its uh, circular flow of income model yes obviously it relates because uh, uh, once uh, there is this equilibrium for example once investment is made then obviously there will be this equilibrium and then this additional income uh, always it will pressurize to produce more to the pro from the producer side and always it will be pressurized until and unless it uh, reaches the equality between uh, production as well as how much the consumer they demand it. Okay, sir. So thank you students uh, for being with us for a for an hour, I think so. And I am very much thankful. We are very much thankful to the Bozit Quarsar for being with us for this session. And I hope uh, we will be pleased to invite Dr. Quarsar again. And I am thankful to the participants for being with us for a long period. I hope uh, we will arrange another session with uh, Dr. Kuorsar and uh, then he will show the slides and uh, solve your queries. So thank you, sir, for being with us. And thank you, my dear students. And uh, I'm thankful to the technical supporter and principal, sir, Sujit Bide, sir. And thank you to all. You may leave now. The okay, meeting is you. over. Thank you, Moni Nath, and the management of the college authority for giving me this uh, nice opportunity. Actually, uh, in busy schedule, actually, I was not prepared well uh, since uh, you immediately uh, uh, well because uh, you just give me the topic, the Indian economy, and then the topic is a very broad topic. And then next day, if I get the opportunity, I'll explain uh, that uh, Indian economy is one part. So thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, sir. Okay, thank for being with us. Thank you, sir.